It's your favorite thing, vocabulary. Let's go over some key terms to see what words you already know and what kind of musical jargon you're already familiar with and what you need to know. I want you to remember it your way, but some words you can't just remember it your way. You're going to have to remember the industry standard way. So let's go over a few of these terms, okay? We've got chord, scale, arpeggio, whole note, half note, key, sharp, flat, tune, hertz, frequency, pitch, amplitude, oscillation, square wave, sine wave, triangle wave, white noise, ADSR, envelope, major, minor, chromatic, polyphonic, monophonic, glide, and octave. See how many of those words you're already familiar with and if you feel like, wow, well, I already pretty much know what all that stuff is, feel free to skip this section. If not, let's dive right in. The first M is melody when we're thinking about music production. That's going to be the foundation that I recommend we start with. Now, if you feel like you know all of the foundations of melody, then feel free to go ahead and skip to the exam number one titled, Do You Even Melody? and see if you actually do know your melody, okay? If you can score 100 on that, you can skip this whole section. If not, I suggest watching every single one of these videos. So melody is the foundation number one in our class because before you can really start getting too hands-on, you kind of have to understand how musical notes work and uh, develop a foundation for what sounds good and what doesn't. So I'm going to teach you a few patterns, I'm going to teach you a few tricks that are going to help you remind, help remind you of even the most mundane mathematical truths regarding music so that we don't get too bogged down in the math before you're even ready to you know start playing around. I want you to be able to jump headfirst into this, so I have a project file that I'm going to supply. It should be in the description link of this particular video. And you're going to go ahead and open up that project in Ableton, or you can download the stems, as they're called, and import them into your, your program of choice. And I'll have, I'll have to make another video on how to import in different programs. Hopefully you can figure that one out on your own. If not, I suggest just starting with Ableton just so that you can follow along more easily. Or if you feel comfortable, just watch what I'm doing on the screen and no worries about downloading it. If you're a hands-on learner, download it. If you're more of an auditorial visual learner, just go ahead and watch this video and that should be good enough. But first, you're gonna notice a recurring pattern here. Probably every single one of these lessons is going to start off with some sort of philosophical rant. So if you want to skip that, feel free to go to this time on the video and skip it. The first confirmed human knowledge of a relationship between music, astronomy, and geometry comes from Pythagoras of the Greek Empire, or as you might know him, the Pythagorean Theorem guy. Yes, your favorite class from high school is back to haunt you! It's geometry all over again! But what you might not have learned about Pythagoras in your high school geometry courses is that he wrote about a concept called the harmony of the spheres. Pythagoras is credited for the discovery that the pitch of a stringed instrument depends on the length of the string itself. So if you have a longer string, it's going to vibrate at a lower frequency or pitch. And inversely, if you have a shorter string, it's going to vibrate at a higher pitch or frequency. Have you ever wondered why a cello is so big, but a violin is so small? No? Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, now you know. Remember back in Lesson 1B when I said that everything in the universe was vibration and therefore frequency? Well, Pythagoras proved that the same f patterns that show up in light and geometry and music also showed up in the movement of the solar system. Thus, harmony of the spheres. The Pythagoreans believed the size and distance between planets corresponded to the same intervals as in music and that there were audible tones being produced by the planets as they moved through space. 
Thus, Saturn, one of the largest planets and most far away, produced an extremely low bassy tone, whilst the Moon, being so close and much smaller in size, produced a much higher frequency tone. This may all sound like mumbo jumbo, but scientists have proved long ago that each planet has its own resonant frequency as a result of the electromagnetic field surrounding it. In fact, when we're going into theory, every single planet would have a tone that would emanate from it if struck by an object. Okay, okay, okay. So why do you care? Why is this in a music class at all? And how is this related to what we're doing? Because of patterns. Instead of memorizing mathematics and music theory and, and all of these sort of formulas, I'm going to teach you patterns that show up in art, color, everything. And these same patterns are used to produce scales, arpeggios, chords, and basically everything else related to music. The same patterns that show up in the color wheel, as I will show you soon, show up in music theory. I kid you not. Learn these patterns, and you'll never have to memorize a scale. Now before we go any further, I want to give you a few examples of what I mean. I want to show you exactly how wild this is. I was actually very excited when I was doing the research for this video and I came across the color wheel and noticed that it's almost exactly the same thing as the circle of fifths. <laughs> yeah, then like, what's the circle of fifths? Where are you going? Okay, so let me give you an example of these patterns showing up absolutely everywhere in nature and art and pretty much everything you've studied before in the past. In music, we have seven notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it repeats back to A, right? In color, in physics, we have the seven primary colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. These are the primary colors, just like A, B, C, D, E, F, G are primary musical tones. Well, in color, you can separate those primary colors into semitones, and there are 12 semitones in the color wheel. If you look at the color wheel, I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen. In music, there are 12 semitones in every chromatic octave. So we've got seven primary colors, we've got seven primary musical tones, we've got 12 semitones of color, and we have 12 semitones in a chromatic octave of music. Light and sound are practically the same thing, and they're both measured in vibration. In fact, when I went, I, I really wanted to, to see how deep this rabbit hole went, so in my studies, I found that if you arrange each of the seven primary notes based off their frequency and then you align that with the seven primary colors based off their frequency and you make a chord out of the first, the third, and the fifth frequencies in the scale, that would be called a musical chord, if you take the first, third, and fifth primary colors and you add their frequencies together, they're almost equal. They're not even that far off. It's, it, it's insane how connected music and light are. One, three, five is called a triad, which also happens to be in the Fibonacci sequence or the golden ratio. This is proof that all music and all art is based off naturally occurring patterns in the universe. They've existed in nature all along, and we just came around and discovered it, called it mathematics and music theory and color theory. Well, it's all the same thing. So why even bother learning just music theory when you could just look at nature, observe the patterns, and apply that to your knowledge? That's what I aim to teach you in this lesson. Okay, I know I went on a bit of a tangent there. Hopefully I didn't go too far out. Let's go back to the basics now and learn these patterns and how they apply to music in an easy to understand and interesting fashion, okay? 
So the absolute first thing that we have to cover in understanding the foundations of melody in music production is what a whole tone is, what a semitone is, what a whole step is, what a half step is, basically the same thing, what notes are, what pitch is, what frequency is, and how it's used to measure pitch, what a keynote is, and what a tonic note is, which is basically the same as a, as a keynote. And I'm going to explain what all these terms mean, and they're going to set the foundation for everything to come. So let's go ahead and define what a note is in music. A note is the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. It then loops back to A. When we look at a piano, which you will be spending a lot of time looking at pianos in music production because of the piano roll, it's important to know that all of the white keys are your notes. All of the black keys are considered sharps or flats. They, are, they can be either. It's dependent on which note you're comparing it to. If you're looking at G sharp, for example, then that would be in relation to G. So we're saying that this key is sharp to G. So if notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, then what is the difference between those notes? That's where the pitch and the frequency comes in. As you go up A, B, C, D, E, F, G, each note is a higher pitch and therefore a higher frequency. So an A note is generally going to be lower than a C note. And there is exceptions to this because it loops. So it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way up until the highest frequency note that the ear can hear and the absolute lowest frequency note that the ear can hear. So an A note can actually be higher than a B note. Even though that sounds like that couldn't be true, that's where octaves come in. An octave is an arrangement of notes starting and ending on the same note. So if we use A, for example, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, there is an octave of notes. So if all melodies are made from notes, then how do we choose our notes? That's where scales come in. Let's go ahead and hear an example of a melody that is considered to be in key or on pitch and a melody that is out of key or not in pitch. Our ears can hear the difference. It's pretty easy, right? Now I've got a very easy way that, that may help you to understand all of the white and black keys on a piano if you don't already, and to help you understand what semitones are, what whole tones are, what a half step is, and what a whole step is. So let's just start off with the definitions first. I'm going to throw a bunch of definitions at you. This isn't usually the best way to remember things, but let's tell you the definitions up front. So a black key on a keyboard or piano is considered an accidental. They're also considered sharps and flats. Whether a note is sharp or flat is depending on what you're referring to it as. The only keys on a piano that have a letter corresponding to them are the white keys. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G represented by these white keys. The black keys are always written in relation to the white keys. So if we're looking at the D key, then the key, the black key that's right in front of it is a semitone higher than D. 
which makes it considered D sharp. Something that is sharp is slightly higher in frequency than the note that it's referencing. So D sharp slightly higher than D, whereas D flat would be slightly lower than D. D flat could also be considered C sharp. So they're one and the same thing. As you're going across a piano, you have your whole tones and you have your semitones. A whole tone or a whole step is any distance between a white key to another white key that is separated by a black key. That makes it a whole step or a whole tone in difference. So we have a whole step and we have a half step, which means that the E and F keys and the B and C keys are actually half steps from each other because they do not have a black key separating them, which means that they are semitones apart or that they are half steps. Now that's all a bunch of jargon, right? Like how does that help us remember anything? If you already know this, that may seem easy, but if you're just coming into this, you may be like, okay, I don't even know if I can continue this course right now. What is all this stuff? So let's talk about it in a way that's a little bit easier to understand. Imagine that you're walking across a keyboard. I'm gonna label the notes for you to make it easier. And you're starting at the left side and you're walking towards the right. You begin on the C key and you need to move from C to D. So you start walking across, but suddenly there's an accident and you have to go around it. And that means that it's gonna take you a little bit longer to get from C to D than it would beforehand. Now let's imagine the same thing going from E to F. So you start at E, you start your journey, and you continue walking right through to F. There was no accident, it's a smooth ride. All you had to do was go through one semitone. So as long as there's no accidents, every half step would take us right across the keyboard. But every time we have an accident, that doubles our length of time. That makes it two half steps, which is a whole step. So if we wanna go from C to D, there's an accident in our way. We're walking across, we have this accident, we take our half step. We half step ourselves onto the accidental, or the sharp, or the flat, and we take another half step down to D. So how far have we gone? We've gone two half steps, and that equals one whole step. And that's how you journey across the keyboard. Every time you see one of those black keys, it's an accidental. And that means you're gonna take one more half step to get from the white key to the next white key. Which means every step you take that goes over a black key is a whole step. And every step that you take that has no accident, has no black key, that's a half step, okay? And you're, that, that will hopefully help you remember it, and you'll need to know the difference between a whole step and a half step to understand what the patterns are that I'm going to teach you. Because remember, I told you, I didn't want you to just remember a bunch of scales and memorize a bunch of charts, because that's not no fun for anybody. So I want you to conceptually understand what a half step is and what a whole step is. Understand that they're the same thing as a semitone and a whole tone. A semitone is a half step, a whole tone is a whole step. You can call them whatever, uh, whatever your heart desires, but when I start going over these patterns, I'm going to use W's and H's to represent whole step and half step. So you may want to use that terminology to help yourself remember. Now that you know what notes are, what pitches are, frequency, whole tone, semitone, whole step, and half step is, you're ready to take your first walk across a piano. So your walk is called a scale. And a scale begins on one note, and it ends on that same note higher up on the piano. So if we start on C, we go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And that's your scale. That's your walk. And there's a pattern to every single scale and there are only two types of Western scales that you really need to know 
to understand the foundations of music. That's the major and the minor. So the first thing you have to decide is do you want to take the major path, the path that most people go down that's really pretty and nice and sunny, maybe a couple clouds, but mostly just a really relaxing time? Or do you want to go down the minor path, the path less traveled, a little bit more mysterious, you're not really sure what the weather is going to be like there, <laughs> and there could, there could even be some rain. Once you've decided if you want to go down the major path or the minor path, then we go ahead and we look at the route. So we have two signposts here. We've got one called K23, and we've got one called K122. Okay? The K means keynote, and then we've got 2-3. That's the major path. It's called K23. Hopefully you can remember that. If not, I'll give you a few other ways of remembering it. The minor scale is K122 or K122. This is a method I developed which will hopefully help you to understand very quickly the patterns that you'll need to know to create every single major scale and every single minor scale in music. When I first learned these patterns, the way that I had to remember it was just by memorizing the pattern. It was very difficult for me. I've created something which I hope will help you remember this a little bit easier, okay? So if you choose the major path, the path most traveled that most music uses, it's called a major scale or a major key. And on the key, the way that you know all of the notes that are in the key is with the pattern K23 or K23. Okay? And for minor, you're going to remember that it is K122 or K122, however you want to remember. Now, what do these numbers mean? K stands for keynote. That's the first note that you decide to start your walk on, to start your scale. So if you start on C, that's your keynote. And as you go up, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, when you get to C again, that's called the tonic note. It's also the key note, but it, the tonic means here is the key note, but higher up or lower on the scale. What does the K23 mean in the major scale? The K stands for key note, as you already know. The 2 means we have two whole steps, and the 3 means we have three whole steps. And in between both of them is a half step. So essentially what we could write instead of K-two-three is K-two-H-three-H, which means keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. So we have a keynote, which is the beginning. We have two whole steps, a half step, three more whole steps, and one more half step. That is the pattern for every single major scale. You know every single scale now from A to G and every sharp and flat in between. All you have to do is remember that pattern. Another way, the way that I remembered it was just keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. Now, pardon my terrible singing, that's probably not on pitch, and I'm not going to auto-tune it, but if you can just remember the little rhythm of keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half, that might help you to remember the major scale. Or you can remember K23, and just remember there's a half step in between them. So keynote, two whole steps, followed by a half step in between, three more whole steps, and then another half step. So just remember you have a half step in between both of the two and the three. And if you want to write it as 2H3H, that's fine. Or if you'd just rather write WWH, WWWH, that's fine too. That's the pattern that most people memorize. Now for minor, it's the same thing, except now we have a different pattern. Oh, and the cool thing about the major and the minor scale is they both actually have five whole steps and two half steps in them. 
every single major and minor scale have five whole steps and two half steps. Every single one of them, no matter what configuration. So that's a very interesting fact. The only difference between major and minor scales is the pattern that you get there with. So for major, it's the K23, or keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. For minor, it's keynote, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, or K122. And in this instance, it's K keynote, one whole step, followed by a half step, followed by two whole steps, followed by a half step, followed by two more whole steps. But since we've already used our two half steps, there isn't a third at the very end, because just remember, every single major and minor scale have five whole steps and two half steps. Once you've used the two half steps, you're not doing any more, so don't accidentally tack on another half step at the very end of the minor scale, like it might be tempting to do. So, to reiterate again and just beat a dead horse, we've got K23 is your major scale, every single major scale, and you've got K122 as your minor scale. Additionally, you can remember it as keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half is your major scale, or KWWH, WWWH. And for minor, you have keynote, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, or K1H, 2H2. So now that you've started to remember these patterns, let's go ahead and put it to use to help you remember. Go ahead and pick a note on the keyboard, any note that you want. And I want you to go from that note to the same note higher up, but do it in a major scale. Okay, so pick any note on the keyboard and then follow that pattern to get to the same note above and see if you can get it right. You'll know instantly because it just won't sound right. So let's go ahead and open up our Ableton project file and take a look at these scales in action and give you an example of a few major and minor scales before you try to create your own, okay? So I have just a random synthesizer. I've loaded up a preset. This is the Tyrell free synthesizer from Yuhi, and I've just chosen the preset PVL Harpo, the harp. And um, I've created this here because we're going to start with the scale of G major, just to give you an example. I've picked a random letter between A and G, because you know that notes are between A and G, and I picked G. So let's start with the letter G. So we look for it on here, and we've got G. Okay, so there's our first note, G. That's our key note. That also means that it's the tonic note, if we go up to the octave of that G. So where would that be? So we would go all the way up until we find G again. And there is the octave of G. So we've got G here, we've got G up here. Same note, higher and lower pitch. Since we decided to start at the lower G, on here it's called G2, not to be mistaken with G6, since we started down here, that one's considered G2, this one up here, G3, because it's one octave higher. So the G3 is also the tonic note, and we want to get from here to here. Probably going to be some accidents along the way, but we have to use our pattern to get there now. Did we want to go down the major path or the minor path? We chose the major one, so that means we have our K2-3 pattern. So we have K, keynote, and then we need to take two whole steps. So what's a whole step? Well, this right here between G and A is a whole step because we have an accident in the middle. We have an accidental or G sharp. And that's one whole step. So we go G, there's a half step, here's a half step, and that equals one full whole step. 
Hopefully I'm not losing you there. I want to not to be pedantic or anything like that. I'm not sure what level you guys are at. Every one of you could be at a different level, so I'm not assuming any knowledge. If we start here and we go to the black key, that's a half step. If we go to the white key, that's a whole step. And the reason why is because we have that accidental, the accident in the middle of these two notes. So let's go ahead and delete it. We started on G and we're going to go a whole step. And we're actually going to go two whole steps because it's K, two, three. So let's go the first two. Key note, whole step, whole step, and there's our first two whole steps. So we went key note and we went through the accident to create a whole step, went through an accident to create another whole step, but now we have two notes here, B and C, and they don't have an accident between them. So what does that mean? That means that when you go from B to C, that's a half step. So if I wanna go from B to C sharp up here, that's a whole step now. We went from B through a half step, because there is no accidental in between, all the way up to C sharp. That would be a whole step. But remember our pattern, we've got K2, 3. That means key note, whole step, whole step, half. There's our half. So K, 2, H, 3, H. And then we're going to go whole step, whole step, whole step, half. That's the 3H. So in summary, we've got keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. That is every single major scale. If I want to change scales and go from G to something else, I follow that same pattern. If I wanted to start down at A, let's go down to A. Do the same pattern, key note, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. And that would be the key of A major, okay? And another way of remembering this easily, if you're looking at a keyboard, is if we go if we want to go a whole step, just put one key in between. Just put one key in between. Any key at all, if it's a black key or a white key. If you're going from A and you want to go directly up one, that's a half step. And if you go up two, that's two half steps or one whole step. So when you're looking at these kinds of pianos in a DAW, it's a little bit easier to remember what a whole step and a half step is because a half step is when the notes are only one apart they're, they're touching on this scale here if the c is practically touching the d and so what that means i mean sorry the c sharp is practically touching the d on this screen here and that means it's a half step but when we go from d to e here notice how we have a key in between now, it won't always be a black key, like, like right here is a great example. The F key is in between E and F sharp, but that means that from E to F sharp is still a whole step. So you don't always need a black key to be going a whole step, because B and C and E and F don't have black keys between them. So they're just half steps apart. Hopefully I'm not just repeating it too much for you. Hopefully this is helping you remember. And so now we've done two examples. We've done G and A. So let's hear with that scale what your first trip across the piano sounds like. So everything sounded right, right? Uh, but, but how do you know what sounds right? Well, I don't know. Let's, let's experiment by messing some of these notes up. Let's just move them out of place and hear what it sounds like to your ear now. Doesn't really sound right, does it? It sounds much more clear and harmonic if we do it the proper way, doesn't it? 
Oh, well, now I've messed my scale up. Keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. So there's a, that would be G sharp there. So anytime you want to do a major scale, you've got your K2, 3. You've got keynote, two whole steps, a half step, three whole steps, and another half step. Now let's take an example of a minor key. So let's just pick one randomly. We'll do F. And now we're going to take the minor path up the piano. We're going to walk up the piano from F to F. So we've got F down here is our keynote. We've got F up here. That's our tonic and also the keynote of F. And we want to get there following the minor path. So what do we do? We go K122 two, two, or K1H2H2 two, two, or keynote whole step half, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step. So let's follow that pattern, the K122 two, two pattern. So K1, one, one whole step, half step now because we're between the numbers. So we went keynote, whole step, half. Now we want to go two more whole steps. One, two. And we know that because there's space in between them. And so just to reiterate one more time, because repetition is key to remembering anything. It may sound easy now, but this you may forget later if you don't actively go through this with me. So we've got our keynote, and to get from F to G here is a whole step. And the reason why because there's a key in between them, or an accident in this case. Now, from G to G sharp, that's just a half step because they're touching. Those keys are touching each other. It's a semitone or a half step. And then from G sharp to A sharp is another whole step. So where's how does this pattern come into place? We've got K, 1, H, 2, H. There's our half step. And then we're going to go two more whole steps. One, two. So K, one H, two H, two. If we wanted to do F major, we've got K, two H, three H. So K, two, H, three, H. Or keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. Now let's hear the difference between F minor, which we've done over here, and F major, which we've done over there. That is F minor. You hear the difference towards the, the bottom section here at the beginning of our trip? You can almost hear somehow that the major scale is happier in some way. Most humans perceive the major scales as more uh, positive or upbeat or bright in in their feeling and the emotion that they give off whereas most human ears think that minor scales sound more mysterious maybe a little depressing maybe sad maybe angry kind of more of the that side of the emotion there isn't like a better one than another, though everyone will have their preference. Some people just love to write in minor scales, myself included, and some people just love writing in major, some people do both. And in fact, you should master as many of these patterns as possible. This is the, These are the first two that you need to know to master most of Western music, and you've already practically done it. See how easy that is? All you need to know are these two patterns, the K23, and the K122, two, two. or keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half is major, keynote, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step is minor. And sometimes that rhythm helps me to remember as well, because you notice the rhythm to 2H, 3H is different 
than 1H2H2. So keynote, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step is a totally different rhythm than keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. So maybe the rhythms will help you as well. It's all about finding what resonates with you and helps you remember. So figure out if you prefer K23 and the K122 or, per, or see if you prefer just reading it out as uh, W's and H's. Maybe you just prefer WWH, WWWH. I don't know, that's up to you. You decide how you wanna remember. Just remember that when we're going from one note to another note, if there's a note in between them, that is a whole step then that you've gone. If there's not a note in between them, you've only gone a half step. Likewise, saying the same thing over again, if you go from one note to another note and there's a note in between, then you've gone a whole tone. But if you go from one note to another note and there is no note in between, then you've gone a semitone. So now, why don't you, let's uh, pick one, I'll pick one at random for you. Let's give you, uh, let's start off on a trick question just to be super complicated. Why don't you figure out C sharp? So let's start off on C sharp and I want you to figure out the major scale of C sharp by going through the pattern that I just taught you, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, take a moment to create the full scale from C sharp to, to C sharp, okay? And you can do it anywhere on the, on the piano. You don't have to do it way up here where I'm doing it. You can do it down here. So it can be C sharp number three to C sharp number four, doesn't matter. Just pick a place on the piano starting at C sharp and then make the major scale of C sharp, otherwise known as C sharp major, and go from the first C sharp to the next C sharp, which is the tonic note. Okay, go ahead and pause now. Welcome back. So hopefully this is what you came up with. Keynote, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. There's the key of C sharp major, also known as a key. And let's hear what that sounds like. So did you get it right? If you didn't get it right, that's totally fine. Don't be upset with yourself. It's probably just because you have some confusion regarding the difference between whole tones and semitones or whole steps and half steps. So just rewind the video a little bit and go back to the part where I was talking about whole steps and half steps. Go over that one more time and then try this exercise again. Now, if you have succeeded, congratulations. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm gonna pick another random note on the piano here and I want you to create the minor scale for that now. So let's start with D sharp this time. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and make the D sharp minor scale from D sharp to D sharp. Just one, one section. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully this is exactly what you got. Keynote, whole step, half, whole step, whole step, half, whole step, whole step. So we have D sharp, F, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, and then ending on D sharp. And here is what the key of D sharp minor sounds like. Okay, now why is all of that important? Why is it important to know these scales? Why do you need to know these patterns? Because they give you the guidelines or the rules that keep your music sounding good and pleasant instead of just a bunch of random cacophony of notes. 
Now, keep in mind that these are guidelines. They're not hard, fast rules. There is no such thing as rules in art or music. Remember that. But these are good guidelines, and if you follow them and you master these patterns, they're going to help you in your first few years as a music producer tremendously and set a, a powerful foundation for the rest of your music career that you will always draw from. And it will also set you apart from anyone who hasn't done that legwork. Because, to be honest, music is getting so easy nowadays thanks to the power of technology. I'm going to give you an example right here. Let's just go ahead and, and look at my uh, Push 2 here, the Ableton Push. And what we've got here, yeah, pardon my little, let me move these around. So, if you look on this screen here, I can hit a button that says Scale. And I can go through this and I can say, oh, I want a major scale or I want a minor scale. And then I can pick a letter, oh, A flat. And then what do you know? I'm magically in that scale. Now I can just hit these keys. And I've suddenly done the key of A flat minor, right? So technology makes it extremely easy for us to know nothing about m music production, know nothing about melody, and to still produce music. But the difference is, when put into a room and given a time crunch, one music producer who knows the basic fundamentals and foundations of music theory that I've just taught you is always going to outdo, and especially in terms of speed, the time that it takes them, the other musician because they know these patterns and they recognize their significance. Two whole steps, a half step, three half steps, Jesus Christ, I can't say this shit.